Remember our first step when we were trying to graph rational expressions was to factor and simplify these expressions as much as possible. So our numerator here, <coughs> we need to factor out an x. That leaves us with x squared minus 16. I don't really know how you prefer to do it. Let's go ahead and finish factoring that so we don't get distracted by what's going on in the denominator. X squared minus 16 is the difference of perfect squares, so it factors into X plus 4 times X minus 4. In the bottom, <clears throat> it also has a GCF of negative 4X. When we take out a negative 4X, we're left with X, and we would have plus 1 <clears throat> because we took out the negative 4. So, when we are analyzing to see if anything simplifies, the only thing that will simplify is the GCF of X. Okay, we can cancel those, so our simplified expression looks like this. X plus 4 times X minus 4 over negative 4 times X plus 1. So, when we go through our list, <clears throat> we start with uh, holes. Okay, we canceled one factor. We canceled x equals zero. Or excuse me, we canceled x, so we set that equal to zero. We find out that the x coordinate of our hole is at zero. We'll look in the calculator here in a minute to find the y coordinate. <clears throat> Vertical asymptote, what's left in the denominator was set equal to zero. Negative 4 doesn't equal 0, so we only have to worry about the x plus 1 equaling 0. So that means our vertical asymptote is at x equals negative 1. So we'll go ahead and put that on our graph. Vertical dashed line at negative 1. <clears throat> our horizontal asymptote, we compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. I compare that in the original function. Technically, you can compare it at the end, um, but I think it's easier to look at the beginning. We've got degree 3 in the numerator, degree 2 in the denominator. So when the numerator is bigger, we do not have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, no horizontal asymptote. X-intercepts, we take what's left in our simplified numerator set it equal to zero, we have two. X plus four is equal to zero, X minus four is equal to zero, so that means negative four is zero is one of our X intercepts, positive four zero is our other. Okay, we haven't had a case where we've had multiple X intercepts, but it is possible. And then our Y intercept, plug zero in, um, you can plug that in anywhere, but the original is the easiest one to plug it in. We get zero over zero for um, when we plug in zero into the original. So we actually don't have a y-intercept, and that's because our hole is at x equals zero. That's where a y-intercept would be, where x equals zero. So we'll find out what its y-value here is in a second. So remember, we type in the original, and we type in our simplified version, making sure that we get parentheses around the numerator, parentheses around the denominator, <clears throat> being very careful with parentheses for the simplified version. You gotta close it around the entire numerator, parentheses around the entire denominator. Okay, so when we go to our table, our y value should be the same, um, except for at x equals zero, we have an error for the first one because it's a whole, but the second one tells us what the y value is. Um, so our whole is at zero four. So it's 0, 4 is where we're going to put our open circle there. Um, we can see that at positive 4, the y value is 0. At negative 4, the y value is 0. At negative 1, we have an error in both of them. 
Remember when the error shows up in both Y1 and Y2, that's when it's a vertical asymptote. Um, let's get some exact points here just to add some accuracy to our graph. Negative 2, negative 3. I like to do whole numbers as much as possible. Uh, 2, positive 1. Mm, negative 6, positive 1. Let's get some more on the positive side. Um, seven, just a little bit more than negative one. Oops, that's six. All right, so that's pretty good as far as points. I'll look at the graph just so that I can confirm what this looks like. Okay, this one looks just a little bit different because it doesn't have a horizontal asymptote that it's approaching. It's only approaching the vertical asymptote. So you'll notice that the ends here on the left side, it continues to kind of increase instead of leveling off. And then the same thing on the right side. It's going to continue to decrease um, instead of leveling off to a horizontal asymptote. Okay. Remember that the calculator does not show you the detail of a hole. That's something that you have to know to be able to put in there yourself. Um, and the vertical asymptote, obviously, the calculator graph says a solid line, but on your graph, it should be a dashed line. Okay? <laughs> All right. Um, let's do number 21 as well. Let's do number 21. x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x over negative 3x squared plus 3x. All right. So, um... We want to factor and simplify. So in the numerator, we start with the GCF of x. Or is this with x squared plus 2x minus 3? In the denominator, let's take out a negative 3x. Because the leading term is negative, we want to factor out that negative. So is this with x minus 1? Because the second 3x was positive. So when we factor out a negative, it's going to make that a negative one. The numerator can be factored further into x plus 3 times x minus 1. Make sure that you are careful with that, though, so that you don't cancel something that should not be canceled. So in this case, we can cancel x minus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator. And we can cancel out just x in the numerator and in the denominator. So our simplified function is x plus 3 in the numerator over, we've got negative 3 left in the denominator. Remember, we don't like to leave the negative in the denominator. So I'm going to slide that to the numerator, making sure that I keep parentheses around the x plus 3. And now, it really doesn't matter when you type that into your calculator as you type the negative in the denominator with the 3. Um, it's just when you're writing your answers, you want to keep the negatives in the numerator. All right, so going through our list, um, holes. We have two things that we canceled. We haven't dealt with having two holes, um, but we canceled x and we canceled x minus 1. So we have a hole at x equals 0 and we have an a hole at x equals positive 1. We'll find the y values here in a minute. Um, but you can find them by hand, guys. Um, I'm just showing you how to find them on the calculator. You can plug them into the simplified version. Um, so if we plug 0 into our simplified function here, 0 plus 3 is 3. Negative 3 over 3 is negative 1. And if we plug in 1, 1 plus 3 is 4, so that's 1, negative 4 thirds. All right, or you can get the information off the calculator. Either way. I'm just showing you where it comes from. Um, vertical asymptote. What's left in the denominator set equal to 0. Well, 3 cannot equal 0, so we don't have a vertical asymptote for this one. We have two holes instead. Now, that's not to say that if you have two holes, 
<coughs> that you automatically don't have vertical asymptotes. That's just the case here. Horizontal asymptote compared to the degree of the numerator to the degree of the denominator. Same case we just had. The numerator is greater than the denominator, so we have no horizontal asymptote. X-intercepts, what's equal, or excuse me, what's left in the numerator set equal to zero. So negative three, zero is our x-intercept. And it doesn't matter, that negative in front really does not matter. You could distribute it and you would get the same answer. You should get the same answer. Y-intercept, we don't have one because our whole was at x equals zero again. So since I went ahead and calculated the holes, I'm going to go ahead and graph them. Zero, negative one, and one, negative four thirds. That's just a little bit more than negative one. So let's see what this looks like. I'm just going to type in the simplified version this time. table we can confirm some of these things uh, x equals 0 there's the y value negative 1 positive 1 negative 1.333 is negative 4 thirds uh, x intercepts negative 3 0 there are all the characteristics when we look at the graph all of a sudden we have this line it's just a line <clears throat> um, there's no curve to it like we would expect. Well, that's because of what the simplified version turns out to be. If you look at the simplified version right here, that's not technically a rational expression anymore because there's no variable in the denominator. Technically, it doesn't really look like it, but technically that is a linear function right there. Um, we could rewrite that. We could divide both those terms by 3. And that is negative 1 third x uh, minus 1 is really what we're looking at. Uh, so this rational expression simplifies to this linear equation. Um, but obviously if you didn't have the original rational expression, you wouldn't have the, the two holes there. Okay? All right, so I could do a couple more examples, but really I think the best thing for you is just to practice with this. Um, so there on your work.